I got to lock the screen. All right, how's everybody feeling? Woo! We got to make like a <laughs> like a specific like ululation for teach everybody how to do a little ululation. What you got? That's your screen. I got mine. You got yours. I got mine. It's good. We could be on different slides. It's it could be meta. It could be inception. We got some inception for you guys coming up. Yo, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Okay, mine's on. Okay. Everybody good? How is, how is the semester going for you guys? Is it great? Does it suck? It sucks. Listen. I don't know if you guys have already have plans this weekend. Um, I heard it's going to be warmer, but uh, you, my girl and I are just going to the Caribbean. So, you know, if you guys want to hang out with us, just book some tickets. Come on down. Um, it's carnival. You guys know it's carnival, so that's the time to get out of here. All right. On a less carnivalistic note, um, so here's a, these key concepts. Intersectionality, feminism, black feminine. Oh, okay. Actually, it's not key concepts. The key concept I want to talk about is intersectionality. Now, have we defined intersectionality in the class? We've have we? In conversation? OK. I, I think I know the people who were saying, I saw like a couple people say no. I think what you meant, and I understand why, is that I didn't put up a slide. right? I didn't give you a definition. And but tell me, in the Patricia Hill Collins reading, was she, she defined intersectionality, did she not? Somebody tell me. Like, confirm for me, like it's in there. A description of the, the term is in there. I don't want to assume. I want to, I am assuming. It is there, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So now, um, generally speaking, now, for sure in this class, I've talked to you guys already about understanding things, the difference between understanding things conceptually versus understanding them topically. And generally speaking, one of the main reasons is a lot of studies in psychology that show, there's like a famous study, I think it's called like, is it possible to teach psychology? And what the study is about is that it showed that students will take psychology classes, and this applies to all your other classes as well, including this one, I wish it wasn't the case. Um, but some people will manage, no matter what I say, to come out of here. You know, and anything that they retain, they will have learned it topically rather than conceptually, which means it's useless. Um, or next to useless. May not be, it's not useless in the sense of if the reason why you're here is to get the credits and you get the credits. Or... Or beyond that, if you can then, you know, somebody says, do you know anything about hip hop? Or do you know the elements of hip hop? And you can say, yeah, I know the elements of hip hop, right? So then you've learned it topically. You've learned the elements of hip hop. You've learned when to say it. When people say hip hop, you say, hey, did you know it's not just music, it's a culture? Hey, did you know that the culture is composed of these core four elements? Hey, did you know there's a fifth element? What's that? Knowledge. OK. Now, have you learned any hip hop knowledge? Are you able to take that knowledge and see other domains of knowledge differently? Can you do your engineering differently? Can you understand claims that people are making in biology differently? Can you understand when people are talking about social justice that they're not looking at these issues intersectionally and therefore throwing under the bus the majority of people that they imagine they're helping? Right? So if you learn these things only topically, 
I haven't said explicitly what that means, but maybe you've, you've drawn it from the way I've chastised uh, the, the, the future you um, in, the, uh, in an alternate universe who you're not going to be, right? Instead, you're going to be the you that learns these things conceptually, uh, that can transpose the things that you're learning in this class about hip-hop and social justice to other areas, other domains of knowledge, which, by the way, I've just now defined for you what intelligence is. Did anybody hear it? What's intelligence? What does it mean to be intelligent? Forget about what I said. I'll tell you my version of it. You tell me word association. What is it? What is intelligence? Huh? Knowledge. knowledge. Okay. It's definitely something to do with knowledge, right? Let's agree. Anybody disagree? Let's have a motion. Second, everybody, anybody second this? The motion? Okay, seconded. Let's have a vote. Intelligence, something to do with knowledge. All, all the all the eyes? Okay, it looks like quorum. Quorum? Okay. All right, now. Now let's continue. What about knowledge? Solving problems. Okay, okay, intelligence has something to do with solving problems. Anybody dispute that? Any counterclaim? No? Okay. All right, let's imagine blah, blah, blah. Everybody agree. Okay, it's about solving problems. has to do with knowledge. What else now? Yeah. Experience. Did you guys set this up? You guys are all sitting here. Okay, experience. All right, now this one is more This one is less, ex less obvious. That, so we all, I think for sure, intelligence has something to do with knowledge. For sure, has to do with problem solving. Tell us more about why it necessarily has to do with experience. Well, I think to be like really intelligent on a certain subject, if you have a lot of experience with it, that kind of gives you, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I guess more, you, you, st you like have more of a position to be talking about it, I guess, if you have more experience with it. I guess that's what I mean. Okay. Keep the mic. I'm a, we'll, let's talk it out. Um, totally hear what you're saying. Uh, the more experience you have with a subject, a topic, um, the more facility you're going to gain with whatever knowledge is necessary f to, to gain proficiency and then later maybe mastery in that domain of knowledge, right? In the place where that knowledge is applicable. Totally agree. But now, let's work, the, we'll do this, uh, this is dialectical reasoning, what we're doing, right? So through dialogue, through dialect, we talk it out, and then we like refine our understanding. So all of us, the way we understand most things, right, the definitions that we have in our heads, we know them implicitly. You didn't learn them, most of the things that you know, most of the words that you're using, you didn't learn them from reading a dictionary. You learn them from context. And so because you learn them from context, you learn them implicitly, so you generally know how to use it, but you have trouble if I ask you to define it. Doesn't mean you can't define it, just means it's gonna take you some time to talk it out and to find what you actually think it means. And that doesn't mean that you don't know shit, doesn't mean you don't know the words that you use, but it does mean that because you haven't generally gone through that, you, this is where, as I've been trying to teach you, there's lots of things where when we go through this, you'll find some things you'll just know the answer to. Intelligence, everybody's going to have a reasonable understanding of it. But it's not going to be as good as, you tell me. If the, if the definition I give you ends up being shitty and I wasted five minutes talking about it, tell me. And then I'll come up with a better one. And dialectically, dialogically, we'll come up with a better one. Now, experience. Good point. In general, I think that's true. I think everybody would agree if we did a vote. I don't think we need to. Let's just go to the part where Professor D says, yeah, but. I don't know if you know he does that. Um, isn't it the case that sometimes there are people who, seem, who have had so much experience in a given domain of knowledge or a given practice 
and yet they seem so stupid. And then you have, and then somebody else could show up. Maybe it's like one of you small motherfuckers. And you, like, you look at what it is, and you ask the person, wait, what is, and they, you know, they've been doing it for years. You just learned about it last week. You're like, but how come, how come, how come, and then you're better than them in a week, right? I'm sure that's happened to you. I can tell that's happened to you. Um, but it happens, right? So do you agree that something like that could happen, or am I, is that I, 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 I agree. Okay. So, so when we say intelligence, we're not necessarily... It's not a necessary part of the definition. It's something we expect. We expect people to be proficient, to be good at things, if they spend time on it. But it's not part of, I don't think it's the way we would define intelligence. As a matter of fact, we might define intelligence as the ability to get good at something without excessive experience. But, 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 the part that, but anyway, the part that you're bringing up is... Here's where I think is really at the core of your contribution. So there's problem solving, there's knowledge, and there is the application of knowledge. And I think really this is the thing, because like, I can give you these definitions, right? And then I can say to you, and this is, and this is the, the problem with the, you know, learning stuff from a lecture, or watching a video, or whatever. If you're not doing problems, if you're not applying it, right? Doing problems can be whatever, math problems. You know, but in history, you don't do history problems, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I wish that I had the time for, one of the things like, you know, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. One of the things, one of the ways that I want to improve this class is add more exercises precisely solely that you can practice working with these concepts and see what it means to, like, apply the concept to yourself. This is what we do in smaller classes with a larger group. It's a little bit harder. Right? Smaller classes, I can just do it by talking to everybody. Um, but so, so anybody else, what else would we add to? So the good contribution. So intelligence, it's about knowledge, but you know, people can be knowledgeable, but not be very masterful. Right? So that's your contribution. Good point. People could be knowledgeable in the sense that they you know, can list off all these things. They can know these things but then they, they can't use it to solve problems, right? So then we wouldn't say they're intelligence. They're just, they're, they're knowledgeable and dumb. Uh, I'd say part of intelligence is also the desire to seek knowledge. At a, you know, just the desire to learn. Okay. What do you guys think of that? This one I want to know. Now, okay. Anybody second that? Is that, is that like part of the definition of intelligence? So you second it? Okay, let's have a vote. Let's have a vote. The vote do, it does not decide whether it is or not. It's just like how, what, how you feel. And you always get to change, you can change your mind. But do you think that that is like the desire to learn, to know? Is that part of what you think defines intelligence, makes a person intelligent or not? Uh, People who think it is part of what makes someone intelligent. Raise your hand. Okay, okay. People who think it's got nothing to do with it. Raise your hand. You're, being, you're intelligent independently of whether you give a fuck about learning or not. Hands all the way up. I want to see. Okay. It's a, there's a, some kind of a... It might be close to 50-50. We need to like get that... Do like an actual survey. Okay, so, so somebody who, so let's hear somebody say, articulate the other side of that debate. Why does it not have to do with, why might it not have to do with, let me get somebody I haven't heard from yet. I saw a bunch of hands. Somebody up here? We haven't heard from? Now, I saw like a ton of hands back there, now nobody won't put their hand up. Yeah, okay. What's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Um, I feel like I wouldn't say it's totally not part of the definition. I feel like it's not necessary, but I would say if like I came across a person that demonstrated that quality plus like being super knowledgeable, I would consider them intelligent. So I wouldn't say it's like totally not part of the definition, yeah. but I wouldn't say it's necessary. I mean, yeah, so let's distinguish the difference. This, this is a good point. Um, 
when we are coming up, I'm trying to encourage you guys and teach you guys how to like, how to come up with definitions, how to interrogate definitions. And this is, in order to have this skill, it's, um, you know, you have to be able to read definitions from sources where they haven't explicitly stated it, right? So it's, you know, it's not every t all the time when a reading says, I define hegemony as, or I define feminism as. Most of the time, the terms are being defined implicitly if they're being defined at all. And if they're even being used consistently throughout whatever you're reading. And that's the same when you're talking to somebody. Or you're talking to somebody, the, you know, one minute they mean race in terms of, you know, one way, and then the next minute they mean it in terms of ethnicity, and then the next minute they mean black, not race. Right? This happens, and we all do this. So, Elizabeth, this point that you made um, brings up this distinction between a definition is, uh, like a good definition is a way to articulate the thing such that nothing else fits that description and nothing's included in it that would make that definition apply equally well to something else. So, if you're saying that generally speaking, you would expect intelligent people to be those who are interested in learning, but that's not a necessary criterion for someone to be intelligent, then you would be saying, which is what I think you're saying, then you would not be including um, that desire to learn in the definition. But here's another way to spin the same kind of thing you said. You could say, people might think, we might assume, that somebody could be intelligent without caring about learning, but we would be wrong. We would, just, we would be observing someone like this guy right here who just looks disinterested all the time. He just acts like he doesn't care, but that's just because he's too cool. But really, the only way he learns is because he has that desire. Even if he doesn't think that he has the desire, the reason why he's learning is because he pays attention, which means that you agree with Kai's definition. So. I feel like sometimes, even if you don't think you're being curious about something, you might subconsciously be if you're retaining the information. Yeah. And you know what it's like to talk to somebody who's not curious at all. Mm -hmm. Right? Even yeah, when you're mildly so. curious. Right? Because then you're like, yeah, but don't you think? And then they're like, no, I don't. And you're like, exactly. That's the fucking problem. OK, here's my definition of intelligence. Anybody want to add anything? Nope. Somebody had their hand up? Here's what I propose. Intelligence, oh, I haven't quoted KRS-One yet today. Rap is something you do. Hip hop is something you live. In either case, it's an active thing. Now, generally speaking, you guys gave m much better answers than people generally will when you say, what's intelligence? But still, in the back of your minds, here's the way you think of it. You think of it as an innate ability that some people have and some people don't. Some people are born intelligent, some people are not. Yeah, you could foster it, you know, but some people are just stupid, some people are smart. Obviously, everybody here is smart, you know. Obviously, some more than others. And you've also learned to perform your identity as smart or not smart in your so different social groups that you're in. So you know to behave not as smart as you are in certain situations. Did you, you heard what I said, right? Anybody that's not true for? Put your hand up if that's not true. You know that... It's socially, like, you're just more comfortable, or you know that people expect you to play off a little bit dumber than you are in a particular scenario. And other scenarios, you act like you know shit which you clearly don't know. Now, I'm not going to ask anybody to put their hand up, because I know that's true of all of you. <laughs> anybody put their hand up is a motherfucking liar if you say, no, I never, no, I'm never, never. Never did that. But intelligence is an active. And imagine this. Think about this, right? Think about how people use the word stupid. 
let's say stupid is the opposite of intelligence, right? What is it to be stupid? You are all using this word all the time. Maybe you're not all. Lots of us. Most of you guys use the word all the time. You also notice, but have you noticed this? How many people have noticed this? You notice how stupid people use the word stupid a lot? Like they call shit stupid in a, in, in, in a way that like clearly applies to way too many things. Clearly, like, they, they're not using it to mean anything other than, I don't like this. Right? Clearly, that's their definition. I don't like this. Stupid. Now, that, I would say, is not an intelligent... But here's... Now, here... Watch this. I would have said, if I wasn't trying to illustrate for you a different definition of intelligence, I would say to you, that is a stupid person. But better than that... That is a stupid behavior. That is a stupid habit that they have learned. Because what I'm arguing to you, just like hip-hop is something you live, it's a practice that you enact, and sometimes you're doing it, and sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're doing a good job, sometimes you're failing at it. So that's the same thing with intelligence. To be intelligent, it's like you made an intelligent statement. You solved the problem well. You acquired that knowledge efficiently and learned to use it in creative ways to solve your problem or someone else's problem. That's intelligent. Okay? It's not, you're not born, it's not some people who are born solving problems and that's all they do every day, all the time. I know it seems like that's what Professor D is like. But really, it's because he has developed the habit of behaving that way. He has learned. He's been in environments where that has like been encouraged. And then he just kept doing it. And then he ends up in environments where it's not encouraged. And rather than it just like being like, okay, let me conform. He's like, yo, you guys are clearly a problem. Let me solve this shit for you. Right? So... We are, of course, we're all creatures of habit. And what is intelligent is what you are doing in the moment. So we all do stupid things sometimes and smart things sometimes. Racist, what is a racist person? Person, like we say, a person. Our concept of a person is essentialist is like, you know, it's like their being, their existence. But really, what is racist is the act, the utterance, the phrase, the assumption, the behavior, the violence, right? It's an active thing. What is anti-racist? It's an active thing. It's not non-participation in racism. That's not anti-racist. You allow that shit to go on, that's racist because it's an action. You allowed it to go on if you could have done something about it. Right? So then what is it to be feminist? Or, you know, you can ascribe to beliefs. Lots of people will think this. Are you ascribed to a belief? Or is it that when you notice that rights, opportunities, and resources are not being uh, distributed equitably in any social situation that you find yourself in, where you have some agency, where you have some power, do you do nothing about it when, it's, when women or anybody, based on their social positioning, is not being treated equitably? with respect to those resources. So, so that, and that's what we were talking about uh, in our last class. We're not going to go to talk about questions. So topically, I was started by saying topically. People learn, so when people learn intersectionality, the idea that the different kinds of oppression or the different kinds of privilege that different people face 
is not a simple additive matter of just knowing the different aspects of their identity, but that there, these different, are, the different aspects of all our identities intersect in complicated ways to create unique experiences and unique aspects of the oppression that we face or the privilege that we have, right? I was giving you the example of myself. If you just think of it in these overly simplistic ways, they, you know, that's how you get into a, you know, these, these silly questions like, white people denying the fact that they have privilege. Right? You have an example like this. You can have like working class white people who are oppressed economically, and, and that is their, and then they hear about white privilege, and they say, well, I saw a black person on TV who clearly has more privilege than me. You know? Yes, there's many. Black people have more privilege than many white people. It's not because of race that black people on a whole have privilege. But there's an intersection of class that allows some black people to definitely have privilege over whites who don't have that class privilege. As long as we're living, as long as we're not in our time machine and, you know, at that time when black middle class you get a little too much money, to, you know, you know what happens. Um, okay. We also talked about, I just mentioned feminism, like a more, like a, there's a substantive way of understanding what is feminist. There's a materialist way of understanding all these concepts versus the idealist way. The idealist, as we talked about, is just, you know, this more f simple way of saying, well, it's just about equality, but not thinking about, uh, you know how the way injustice is talked about here, or the way like, you know, issues of racism are talked about in the mainstream institution is about people getting offended. Don't offend some, that, that was culturally insensitive, right? And I'm not suggesting to you that you can't be racist by being culturally insensitive. Surely you can. But being culturally insensitive in and of itself, that's not a definition. Notice, remember, Elizabeth, what we were just talking about, right? Like a necessary component. You could, there's lots of examples you could come up with of cultural insensitivity that constitute racism. But you could come up with examples of cultural insensitivity that's merely, this merely cultural insensitivity. It's not racist, right? So what is the distinction? The distinction has to do with, I'm trying to you know, argue to you, a materialist analysis will say, is there oppression? What is the distribution of rights, opportunities, and resources, and how does that affect people's lives in real senses? Or this thing that we were talking about, biology, tie it back to the epigenetics thing. Um, Sammy was mentioning that another student had brought us, uh, had sent a, an article, um, and what, and also we had a, a guest speaker come to our department recently, and they pointed out that social construction of race has, the, which, is, which is what we discussed already, but they said it like in a really concise way, the social construction of race has material effects, has material impacts, including on the biology of people. If you live in communities where there is environment, that are subjected to environmental racism, food deserts, etc., you don't have access to a healthy environment, then that will trigger your, if you were there, right, trigger certain uh, effects in your genetics. Right, have epigenetic impacts, have, uh, have um, caused certain genes to be activated, right? certain gene transcriptions take place and others not to. 
And, of course, in a different, more privileged environment, less stressful environment, right? Back to, you know, what you were saying, uh, Nick, the other day about, like, the stress and the opportunities, right? The opportunities to volunteer th places, right? And develop habits, which then make you seem intelligent and make you seem like you were just born that way. But really, it's because you had the luxury of learning discursively, of talking to people. And then it's like, yo, how do you know all these words? Well, I've been talking to people. So would an example of, <clears throat> excuse me, like environmental racism be like the lead crisis in Milwaukee with the lead in, in the water, or like Flint, Michigan specifically with what? Like, is that a good example of that? You, t you tell us. Um, I'm, I'll play. I'll, let me play dumb. Okay. Not dumb. I'll play like I lack certain knowledge. Is that my computer? Is that your computer? Is it mine? Okay. I'll just turn, off, turn it off. Um, so, uh, why would an issue of water be, ha have to do with racism? If it's water, that means it's the public, you're talking about water in the pipes. Yeah. It's going to everybody. It's not pipes that are going to black people's houses as opposed to white people's houses. Or is it? I mean, yeah, that's like the problem in Milwaukee, especially right now. I mean, the Flint situation, the Milwaukee situation are similar. Let's talk about Milwaukee. We're closer yeah. to Milwaukee. So there's um, the pipes that... Any, how many people know about the pipe and the water situation in Milwaukee? Put your hand up if you heard about this. Okay, so some minority, it's a few people. Okay. Um, people who have heard about it, who heard about it recently? Sort of. Okay, and where, where did you hear about it? In what kind of venue? Uh, I was just like, on Google Scholar, looking else about the article. It was a scholarly article? Or it was like a news article? No, I know, I know. But, it was, but was it, did you get the impression it was like, a, like an academic article or like a CNN type of thing? Okay, okay, cool. Murph, where did you hear about it? Like a news type of thing. Okay, Nick, continue. Break so it down. Very basically, it's the fact that the pipes that service housing in disenfranchised areas, mm -hmm. populated typically by citizens of Milwaukee, they're often. How about we say economically oppressed areas? Economically oppressed areas have very, very high levels of lead in them, which obviously is super unhealthy. And then to. Areas, you, know what it, you know what it does? It makes you dumb. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the pipes leading to like upscale. Non-economic, what was the terminology you used again? Uh, I was just making shit up, I don't know. You're just making shit up, okay. <laughs> Non-economically oppressed, or those who are oppressing. I, I wasn't just, I'm, that's a joke, guys. Are yeah. crystal clean. So it's just, it's, a good one. it's an example of... Are crystal clean. You don't say in the, in the uh, privileged areas. They are. Maybe that's what makes them privileged areas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess that <laughs> functions in more ways than one. But um, it's just an example, especially of how this system, and specifically the city of Milwaukee and its government, has continued to segregate the city and make it nice. I dare you defame Milwaukee like this. How many people are from Milwaukee? All right, is what he's saying true? It's Milwaukee's fucked up. It is fucked up. All right, yeah, yeah. It's good job defaming Milwaukee. What are, you got, what are we going to do about it, though? What can you do about it? There was an investigation led two years ago that prolonged for about a year and a half, but nothing really came of it because the city's racist. How many people have seen, what is, what's uh, Bill, what's, um, what's Michael Moore's last film? What's it called? Everybody know? The one about Trump? Uh, 11, was it, is it 11-9? Is that the name? 11-9? Nobody seen it? Put your hand up if you saw it. I gotta show, I gotta show some clips of that shit. You guys never... Okay, we got... Sammy, can you make a note? We're going to show some clips on that. Um, yeah, specifically, here's the, here's the clip I want to show. Just write this down. We'll show it. Uh, Obama taking a sip of the fucking water. Write that shit down. If you guys haven't seen that shit, I, I need to show you that shit. It's... Trigger warning. It's fucked up. Is it on Netflix? I don't know. I don't know. But, like, we'll get some clips here. It's Michael Moore, 11.9. Okay, let's go back. No, so I wanted to ask, from last class, 
on these topics because you know, I want you to be able to apply these. So um, I talked with some other students as well where you, know, you guys are working on applying these. So like, can you guys think of any other examples either that you didn't get to say the other day or that you're thinking of now to apply to any, it could be these or it could be like any social, just, you know, social justice issue of like how you approach it in the ways that we're talking about. Um, well, no. I, I was uh, thinking of this over um, uh, on Wednesday and like um, I came up with the idea of like uh, how this could be applied to like rape culture and okay. the idea of like... Um, like I had you, a terrible if, joke when you just said that. <laughs> really inappropriate. If you like, if you like, analyze it from like a the materialist way, it's um, the men who are like um, uh, gaining from this culture are gaining the fact that the um, uh, they're not getting prosecuted properly. They're not getting. They have no fault in the um, in the uh, processing of um, the legal system with this culture that has been perpetuated um and like that development obviously is not good for women at all right like, because of the fact that it just like lets men do whatever they want and then um but that like is um fought with the idea of like people just saying like oh well men are men are men boys be boys like they can do whatever they want and, like, okay so, but that, but this latter way that you're characterizing, and so, the, and so this latter way is when people say, well, there's only so much you can do. Boys are going to be boys. They're just young and horny, and, you know, they're going to drink some beer or whatever, right? Well, that, um, that's an essentialist way of thinking about gender, mm -hmm. right? Like your gender performativity, the way you perform your gender which all gender is a performance, okay? All of our identities are a performance. Remember I said to you guys, you've learned to behave in a certain way. In order to be, I told you that identity, you're at every aspect of your identity is simultaneously a disidentity. Remember that? Now, in order, now here's the next part of that. In order to be recognized by the other people in that identity group, right? So your identity group, is also simultaneously outgrouping people from that group, obviously. Uh, you don't have a group if you don't draw a line somewhere. So you are expected to perform in a certain way, or if you have all the social power, right? If, what's the dynamics of power in that social group? If you have all the power, then you are requiring others to perform in a certain way in order to be accepted in that group. So... So that's, what you're, so that's this thing that you're critiquing there. But what about in terms of your own thinking? Like, so obviously you learned about rape culture. You knew it was a problem. Obviously you weren't in that latter way of thinking prior to taking this class. So what are you, what are you saying is different or new about the way you're thinking about the problem than you were thinking about it prior to applying these concepts? Um, well, I'd say that the, um, it puts a little bit more, um, I don't know, like, I, I'm, I'm struggling to, like, okay. think of, uh, exactly what the, um, like, think about, like, think about when you, like, obviously you didn't hear yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, rape culture is an issue yeah. here at the university, right? So, so you've known about this for some time. Mm -hmm. So think back to like last year, you know, whenever you were ha in a conversation about it, right? Or when you were talking to people about it or reading about it, right? How was, was the issue depicted in a way that was not materialist? That assumed that not just, not the opposite side of the argument, but even the argument to say like, okay, here's a way to put it. What is the solution being offered? And does the solution being proposed, this is the way to look at it. Guys, everybody focus here. What is the solution being proposed to the problem? Not by people who are trying to deny that it's a problem, right? But by people who say, okay, we got this. And the question is, is their solution speaking to actually addressing the 
inequity in rights, opportunities, and resources, or is it not? Um, I'd say the most popular solution that I've heard is people saying uh, that girls just need to dress more appropriately. They need to like cover up or something like that. Okay. Like, um, which obviously is um, not addressing that issue because it's more going towards the boys can't control themselves still. Yes. And so like they obviously, no matter, you have to, you have to hide it so that they, they don't have these uncontrollable urges, you know. What is the university's response? University isn't saying that, right? The university takes this question very seriously, do they? Does it? Okay, university doesn't take it seriously. How many people, put, put your hands up. I'm not looking at your, I don't know your names. I do know some of your names. But just put your hand up. People who think the university takes the issue seriously. I'm not saying, uh, you know, everything they should or whatever. Put your hand up if you think the university takes it seriously. All the way up, all the way up. Okay, so put your hands up if you think the university is not taking it, doesn't take it serious. Okay, and then, uh, I guess, this a lot of people didn't raise their hands. How come? Yeah. It's no, I, no knowledge on the subject. No, no knowledge. You see, if it's intel, not intelligent, would be not apply, Not intelligent would be right performing that you have the knowledge, or saying yo that shit is stupid when you have no knowledge. But to say I have no knowledge, that's intelligent, right? Now I can make all kinds of jokes, you know, based on your gender performativity. Um, but, you know, I don't need to because uh, it's, because it's so funny already. Um, so, okay, put your hands up if you're in that thing. What's your name? Yeah, so put your hands up if you're in the category of Paul. Just like, I don't know. Okay. Now, put your, put your, you can put your, put your hands up if you have heard about this, like, in the news, but... And you, were, and you still don't know, right? You're one of the people who didn't know, but you've heard about it. Okay. The distinction I'm trying to draw there is like having no knowledge of it, having not heard about it as a problem, versus having heard about it as a problem, but not heard about the university saying, we're taking it seriously, we're doing this and that, or, you know, and, then ha and then you having a, an opinion about it, if you think it's legit or not. Okay, so let me get somebody else. Thank you, Noah. Somebody else on this question um, who says the university is not taking it serious. Somebody I uh, haven't heard from in a bit. Hey, was, is there other people? I saw another hand. No? Who doesn't think the university is taking it serious? Is everybody all right? Okay, we haven't heard from you. Hello. It's been a while since we hang out, had a little chat. So, is this on? I think so. Is it? Uh, is it green? Press a button. Now it's on. Okay. Um, so I think they. Try we haven't done a lot of hip hop yet today, so if you want to rhyme. Sorry, I'm no good. Okay. Do you want to back? No. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure you're great. I think they try to take it seriously. I know when I transferred here, they make you take a course like get wise about like alcohol and stuff and there's like other ones you can take about relationships and things so i think they try to like educate people uh -huh. on the fact that it's an issue in college towns um and i feel like occasionally it's brought up in like on facebook there'll be some like quorum meeting about like discussing this topic yeah. on campus yeah um but i don't like with my experience talking to my peers, yeah. if an incidents like this happens, I feel like um, reporting is not really encouraged. It's people are kind of scared to report if they know anything about this. And then if someone does, they're kind of still stigmatized, like, oh, you're just making up a story or oh, you're not sure. I think. You're talking about women reporting? Yeah. Women, yeah. Are you? I, I mean, I'm asking. Yeah. I don't want to assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about guys. No. I don't know why, I, yeah. Initially, I was like actually thinking about like guys reporting, and then I'm like, clearly that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> because why would, 
you know. So here's a, but here's the question, right? So, so for sure the university is doing something. There are these, the university performs taking it serious. So my question, if you're going to apply this intersectionally, you're going to apply intersectionality or materialist analysis, right? An idealist analysis is just like, what's the problem? These young men have ideas and they don't understand that raping, you know, is bad. They don't understand that, you know, getting consent from a woman actually is, is required. You know, no means yes, whatever, she, whatever, she winked at me, you know, that kind of, right? So they just, you know, they're going to read this, like, check this out. I totally hear what you're saying. I know, you know, I had to, like, fill out this thing, right? You do this thing. But, like, who, who, who is that going to change, right? Like, p somebody who is going to do this behavior, they're going to fucking read this thing. They're going to click on these buttons, and then they're going to be like, oh, shit, I, didn't, I, just, I just wasn't properly educated. No, they're not. So this is a, f a fantasy fucking approach, all right? It's a liability coverage approach. This is, just, this is just my opinion. You can have a different opinion. It's fine to have a different opinion. Don't be scared to share a different opinion. And also, you notice I have my way of presenting my opinion. Some people find that, you know, like, oh, well, he's so about it. I don't want to, you know. But I'm just, you know, this is how I talk. But it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like when you really think about it, on the surface, I understand. I totally agree. Paul, if I said to you, given that you had no prior knowledge, you know, we talked about it, it sounds serious, I was like, yo, maybe we should like have, if I propose that as a solution, it would sound like a good solution. If I had no knowledge, you proposed it to me, I'd be like, okay, yeah. And then I'll, I'll, and then I'll write these questions, there'll be exercises, everybody will learn, everybody will be smart, social justice. But guess what? I've, asked, I've done a whole bunch of questions and I found out 10 to 20 people learn something, you know? But this time it's going to be different. All right. Um, last thing on the topical thing. So intersectionality comes from black feminist studies. And therefore, people, when people are asked after they've taken a class on it, to say what is intersectionality, they can say a definition, as we've discussed in class. And then you say, what's an example? They say, you know, if you are a black woman. And then you say to the person, okay, or I say to the person, you try it out. Can you think of another example? And they can't think of another example. It means they didn't learn the concept. They can't transpose it they didn't even understand. They, they could say, yeah, axes of identity. We have different intersecting identities. Somebody who's a white male but working class, that's a different social position than if they're white male middle class or upper class or white male cisgender or not. You know, people don't do that. And now what, where, you know, or take it to... Um, nationality, talking about nationality, right? Because they learned it in this one little topic. It's like when you're talking about feminism, when you're talking about black studies, then, they, then it's appropriate to talk about it. So that's not intelligence. What intelligence is, I'm suggesting to you, is the ability to recognize patterns. Pattern recognition. Observe associations and then theorize about those associations. Theorize about the causal relationships between the, the correlations that you see. That's what you're doing when you're being intelligent. When you're being unintelligent, you are refusing to see the motherfucking patterns. And why are you refusing to? Because you're dumb? No, because you've been socialized to compartmentalize knowledge. You've been socialized to cut the world up 
and your behaviors up and your vision up in ways so that you can't apply your engineering knowledge or your biology knowledge or your hip hop knowledge to any topic, any domain, any area other than where it is appropriate. Now, you're not doing that all the time. Often you are transposing knowledge from one domain to another. But the more frequently you develop the habit of doing this on a meta-theoretical level, like Professor D, you recognize patterns, you learn the way things work in social situations, and you say, oh, here's an entirely different social situation, but I can still recognize this pattern. Or you take shit from engineering and apply it to social situations, or vice versa. Right? This is with, and, and of course, every time you do that, when you're transposing theory, of course, you have to be careful about the underlying assumptions and all that kind of stuff. Right? So your abstractions need to be rigorous. It needs to be valid. That's intelligence, in my view. And that's how you solve problems. That's how you see things. You know, an intelligent person is someone who sees things differently. You can behave in a non, not like an automaton, but like, you know, see with your own eyes. All right, this stuff we saw, let's see what the, we did this, oppression. I'll show you this slide, you know, oppression, let's look at it. When one group has historically gained power and control over valued assets of a society by exploiting the labor and lives of other groups, and then by using these assets to secure its position of power into the future. Uh, that's, worth, that's worth taking a picture of. So this is a materialist definition, right? This is not about somebody, I, my feelings were hurt when somebody said something about a group that I'm a part of. That's not what racism is. That's not what oppression is. Even, even microaggressions. What, a micro, what makes a microaggression racist is the way that it is one little thing, one more little thing, that perpetuates the subordinate and insubordinate positions of people in order to perpetuate this unjust distribution of resources. So, if there is a solution to a problem, which is, whatever, you know, click on this thing, you did your training, then you feel good, I did my training. Or you get to, you know, somebody says, well, you know, the university says, yeah, we are taking it seriously, they did their training. Objectively, right, is that changing the distribution of rights, opportunities, and resources? Is that changing the dynamics of power in these social situations? I feel like, uh, every, Paul, what do you think? Let me ask you. No, let me ask. That's fine. You're not the only one here who's zoned out. Is he? Put your hand up if nobody's zoned out. Come on. Um, Paul, let me ask you this question. You have no knowledge. You profess no... Uh, put, you, put your ass on trial. All right. Uh, uh, what's your last name? Uh, Mr. Sheelan, uh, is it, do, do you still contend you have no knowledge of these issues? Yeah. Uh, all right. My question to you is... No, he got a good voice. My question to you is this. Um, did you hear the testimony um, from the Right Honorable, tell me your name one more time. Hannah. Right Honorable Hannah. Um, where Hannah said the university is taking this shit seriously because everybody has to do this uh, sensitivity training so that you know if you meet a nice young woman or young man, whatever you're into, um, you, uh, uh, you should ask for consent. Um, you heard that. Now, do you feel that, so, now, so, so that's the university taking it seriously, according to the university. My question to you is, not do you think that that's taken seriously or not. Here's the question. question is, here's a definition of oppression um, having to do with assets, material benefits. So Noah was saying, what's the material benefit that accrues to men? 
right, through the persistence of rape culture. And Noah made a, you know, a really good point by like making it material. It's not just their satisfaction of getting the thing they want in that moment against the wishes of the other person. It's also the consequences for them don't seem to materialize. Consequences on the book, right? So that's material impact in their lives. Okay, now, that sensitivity training, knowledge, awareness, whatever, do you feel... Did you do that thing? Okay. Do you feel that... Do you imagine that somebody who, filled that, who did that training is going to behave differently now that they've done that training than they would have otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Not like Professor D's class where it's so engaging you never. It's not quite as bad. Yeah. So what would be a real solution? What would, what, I, I, don't, I don't expect you to solve it. You had no knowledge, now you have a little bit. I'm happy about that. Here's my question, though. What, when you're talking about that same imaginary person who, like, is just clicking through it, it's not going to change them if they were going to do it, what would actually change somebody's proclivity? What would that take? Okay. Right. You can throw it up on your side. Did you were you put on timeout as a kid? What do you think I should do with students? Obviously not you. Students who are like not paying attention, who are like on Facebook and shit. Should I just put these motherfuckers on timeout? Should I punish them? So, okay, first of all, I agree with your answer. So your answer of like, you know, material, like there's no consequence. The consequences is the serious thing. That's what you're talking about. So... Here, I just want to add something on to what you're saying. Not, not a disagreement. But the other side is like, you know, it's carrots and sticks is how we all learn, right? So it's like sometimes you want to study. Sometimes you want to learn a thing. There's other things you don't fucking want to learn, right? So then a punishment or a threat of a punishment, that's not always going to do it. So the other thing that's required is to create a different material environment that encourages a different kind of behavior, right? So a real materialist solution, not materialistic, okay? A materialist <coughs> solution to bring about more gender justice would be to put time, money, and resources into not a boring fucking circle that you sit in and whatever, right? But other kinds of social environments, other kinds of activities where different modes of interaction are elicited. Oh, everybody, uh, everybody present? Yeah. Oh, yeah, here, take the mic. Restorative justice is? It's not just enough to, like, you know, punish someone for doing something that's, that, you know, they may or may not think is okay, but there needs to be institutions on place where the victims of these, like assault, or if we're speaking on rape culture still, or even racism in general, yeah. the victims of these like crimes um, need not only to be the ones that are the main focus, but there should be acts and uh, educational opportunities for you know the main oppressors of these groups so to learn at an early age. Want their top hat to... To Marks. learn at an early age, basically, to not do these acts and to stop putting the blame on the victims and the people being put in that position. Um, so, agree. But restorative justice uh, is, is an alternative to this, this punitive approach. And I think, like, all most people here 
we know that a major social issue that we have to deal with is, is uh, you know, the prison industrial complex. Um, but what I'm actually talking about here, very related to what you're saying, right, is, is more like a, pro, like, restorative justice is a way to deal with <clears throat> when acts have occurred, right? So rather than being um, simply penalizing people, uh, actually um, doing something that is more substant, there's more healing to everybody involved, um, to the entire, you know, community. But what I'm talking about, very related, is if, in fact, injustice is not about the, the if, if it's rape culture, what is culture? Culture is not about individuals, right? It's about communities. So what is it about the community and the environment that we're in? The material environment, the structure of the environment and the kinds of socialization that are expected. If we want to change, if we want to change the outcomes, then we have to change the material facts of the interactions, right? The material environment. So it not, and not only do we need to change the way we deal with violations when they occur, we need to change the conditions under which we are being socialized into performing in ways that are harmful to one another. Let's do some top hat questions. And uh, I know you guys want to continue right till 645, but I just feel like going home a little bit early. So we'll do these questions and we'll bounce. Uh, didn't we do this one? <laughs>